Welcome to this 10 minute tutorial for research. My name is Chris. I'm a solutions architect manager here at AWS focused on higher education. Today, we're going to talk about high performance scratch storage for research, leveraging the registry of open data sets on AWS. AWS hosts a registry of open data stored on our durable simple storage service S3 and made freely available to AWS customers. Did you know that you can cache data with FSx for Lustre, even if you don't own the S3 bucket? For parallel jobs, this provides a dramatic speed up, especially if the bucket is in a remote region. I will describe how to do this with Amazon FSx for Lustre, a fully managed AWS service that provides cost-effective, high-performance, scalable storage for compute workloads. The registry of open data comes from basically everywhere. We have universities as well as public-private firms contributing data sets, everything from coastal LIDAR data that's shared by NOAA or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to Zetra and Eurex market data that's shared by Deutsche Börse. Open data allows the publishing of data sets on AWS that can be shared with a global community of users. This provides a reduced time to insight access to new services and tools for those wanting to analyze that data, and a lower cost of research for researchers. You can analyze the data without having to pay for the storage of your own copy of that data. You only pay for the compute that you use, so no need to make a purchase upfront for storage to store the data on. You can find the open data on AWS at registry.opendata.aws. This link will be included below uh, along with other links throughout this presentation. Now let's talk about FSx for Lustre. Amazon FSx for Lustre provides a fully managed Lustre file system that allows file-based applications to access hundreds of gigabytes per second of data, millions of biops, sub-millisecond latencies. This is the same Lustre file system you may be running on your disks and disk arrays with your HPC clusters on-premises. Uh, Luster is open source. It's been around for quite a while. It's a proven file system. AWS has implemented Luster in the cloud so that you can continue to have that same level of performance, that same level of throughput when you're doing your compute jobs on AWS. Today, what's interesting when we're talking about the open data sets is you can use S3 as a storage source for Luster. What I mean there is you can have a bunch of data that you have stored in S3. You can connect your Lustre file system having S3 as the underlying source and Lustre will load those files onto Lustre to give you high speed access that you might not otherwise get. Specifically in our example, it will lazy load. So what will happen is the first time you go to access a file, Lustre goes out to S3, pulls the file, caches it locally in your virtual private cloud or your VPC where you've deployed Lustre and then gives you high speed access to that. You'll see later in the demo, there are ways to pre-stage that so that the first time isn't you know, going out and pulling it because some of these data sets, you might be working in, in Northern California or Oregon and you may be pulling data from the East Coast in Northern Virginia, or you could be pulling data all the way from, from Europe or uh, the Asia Pacific regions. So this can be a, a pretty big latency difference, which we'll also see in that demo. Uh, one use case that might be of interest for researchers is dealing with genomics data. There are multiple genomics data sets that are shared on open data, one of which I will be accessing in the demo. Uh, specifically, the piece that I've called out here with, uh, with this square is the input data. So you may want to use an open data set as your input data source and cache that on a high performance file system. There's a link to the blog that this diagram is referring to that's also below the video and uh, is accessible for you to read whenever you would like. Uh, this takes in uh, AWS Batch, which is another uh, service we use in HPC that uh, orchestrates containers for doing large compute jobs, uh, which is pretty interesting to researchers that are processing genomics data. But furthermore, let's jump into a demo. Our first step in the demo is to find a data set we want to access. 
So let's copy that S3 link and let's go create a file system. So we go to FSX to create an FSX for Lester file system. Click create file system, choose Lester, click next. We want to give it a name that we'll remember. And because we're working with compute jobs, we're gonna use this as scratch because this is not gonna be something we wanna keep. Uh, you store the capacity increments of 1.2 terabytes. We're gonna choose a VPC, a security group, and a subnet. And then I'm going to import data from an S3 bucket. I don't want to synchronize it because I don't own the bucket. I won't have permission to do that. Um, so I'm going to reference the bucket. It's gonna create an export re uh, reference that won't be of any use to us because we're not gonna be allowed to export the data back to this public data set. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click Create. And this takes a few minutes. So I'm going to skip ahead and come back to once uh, this file system has been created. Uh, do keep in mind, if you do uh, control or own the bucket, you can do things like sync files back from that Lustre Scratch system later. So now I've got a file system. Let's take a look, make sure that uh, there's my 1.2 terabytes. Uh, there it is pointing to that S3 link for broad references open data set. If you click attach, it gives you some sample commands where you can attach this file system in your Linux file system. So I just happen to have a Linux system running on a C5N large uh, EC2 instance type. So let's first make sure that we can see that same S3 bucket that I was looking at before. I wanna make sure I can see that broad references data set. There's some fastq data, some other data files, Looks pretty interesting. So um, let's go ahead and, and create the mount point that I will connect to that Lustre file system I've deployed in my VPC. So I've created a local directory called FSX. Now I'm going to use Lustre to mount that Lustre file system to the FSX directory that I created. And let's take a look. Oh, there are the broad reference genome files that I was looking for. This is great. Um, so let's find a file that we want to work with. In particular, I'd like to find a large file, something that pulling it across the, uh, the network, even from S3, would be not quite as fast as retrieving it locally. I see a three gig file here. There we go. That should be large enough to show some uh, real speed differences between running it on a, lo a local Lustre file system or pulling it from S3. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is read in the file. Let's see what the performance is. Now, this is gonna take a little bit because I'm pulling a three gig file from Northern Virginia to Oregon. Uh, so I've sped this up, but you see it took 32 seconds. It's not bad, but if I've got multiple nodes all sequentially or randomly reading this file, that's not gonna be great. So let's clear the local cache on Linux to make sure that I'm not cheating by caching this file locally. And let's read it again from Luster. That second read, five seconds. Uh, that's a pretty much a, a 6x improvement over where we started. That seems like a pretty nice result. Um, the reason that that happened is it's caching it in the local file system. So there's a command I can run on Luster to see. Yes, it's archived, which means it's been cached. So, um, Let's go ahead and advance. I have removed it from the cache using another command. Let's make sure that the file system is empty. 4.5 meg, which is basically uh, nothing. It does not include our three gigs. So our three gig file is no longer cached on our local Lustre file system. Now let's pre-stage it. Using the HSM restore command, what I've told Lustre is go find this file and go ahead and load it now. Don't wait for me to ask for it. Now. It's not fully there, only 467 megs so far. So let's give it a moment to continue caching that file. I've got a command I'll run that allows me to check the status of any particular file to see if it's, in, if it's been cached. The output of NOOP means yes, it has, and there it is. We've got three gig now in use on our Lustre file system. So let's try that sequential read again. Let's see if we can get a better time than 32 seconds. There it is, 
5.3 seconds. So as you can see, if I were scaling this out to multiple compute nodes, running a large processing job that was relying on lots of data from an open data set, I can deploy Amazon FSx for Lustre in my account and then access a publicly shared data set to cache it for high speed. So I can get my research done quicker. I don't have to pay for large amounts of storage and copy files all over the place. I can just point Lustre, spin this up, use it for the duration of my compute job, go back into the console and delete this Lustre file system. I'm only paying for the space and the time that I've used. Thank you for your time. If you look below and uh, by clicking more, you will see some links below this video that cont contain more information. Uh, one of the links is an HPC workshop that not only gets you some hands-on experience using Lustre as a file system, but also gets you familiar with Parallel Cluster and other useful tools for doing HPC workloads on AWS. Thank you again for your time.